Hi there, Nathan Patrick Taylor here. This is the fourth video in the series on AlterX for Excel users. This video is going to focus on the use of the transforms inside AlterX to replicate some of the pivot table functions that are typically done inside Excel. In addition to that, I'm going to take you through using the filter and the sort tool. So let me start with those now and then we'll move on to the transform tools. So very simple uh, filter inside AlterX is done using a filter tool under the preparation menu here. So I'm just going to drag a filter tool onto the canvas and I'm going to put it at the end of the uh, workflow that I've built out before. I'm using the workflow from part three in this series so if you haven't seen that one you can go back and watch it. It's not necessarily required to follow through on this video but it might give you some context to what I'm doing here. Inside this data set, I've got information about guests that stayed at a fictitious hotel, their arrival dates, departure dates, number of guests, how many days they stayed, and so on. What I'm going to do is I want to filter, just using the basic filter, for the number of days that an individual stayed. And so we'll set that greater than or equal to 5. If that equates to true, it'll flow to the true portion of the filter. If it's false, meaning less than 5, it'll flow to the false portion and I'll add browses under both and then we'll go ahead and run the workflow. So in, if I browse real quick I can see the number of days here is the five or greater in the true portion or less than five in the false portion. Inside the filter tool I have the ability to make custom filters as well so the basic filter is really going to let you do some very simple filtering so the operators for equal not equal less than greater than null and not null if you want to make compound formulas so say that I want to be able to do greater than five or they entered or departed on a certain date or they paid more than a certain amount of money I need to use the custom filter to build those out. All right, that's a very basic intro to the filter tool. I can also do sorting, and I did this in the previous video, so I won't I won't go too much into detail and, and be repeat too much here, but I can also sort the data, and the sort is very easy to use, is hit the drop down on the item that I want to sort on. Uh, in this case, I may want to sort on the number of days sort of descending. I can add more than one sort in here, and then choose whether it's ascending or descending and then run the workflow through and when I view the output we can see it's sorted by the number of days two three four five six seven eight nine ten so on very simple sorting all right on to the transform tool so I'm gonna remove what I just built and we'll go ahead and start with transforms and this replicates the pivot table functionality inside Excel. And the one that I think replicates it the most is the cross tab. It's usually the example or one of the tools I need to use when I'm trying to replicate pivot tables. So I need to be able to choose something I'm going to group on typically. You don't have to, but in this case I want to group on the room type. And the room type could be ocean, bay room, a side room, uh, and then I think a window room uh, is our other option, or ocean room. Ocean bay window inside room. Those are the three that I can have. So it'll group on those items. In essence that means it's going to create rows based on what I grouped by in the configuration. And then I can choose what I want the new columns to be, what the va what values those new columns are going to take on. And in this case I want it to take on the length, which is either long stay or short stay based on the number of days that an individual stayed in the room. And then for the value of the individual cells within the cross tab, sort of the way we would do it in a pivot table, is it going to be a sum, an average, a count? In this case, I'm going to count the number of IDs that are both in a certain room and for a certain length of stay. There are only two types of lengths of stay, so I should get a three by two table when this is all done. So three rows, two columns. So let's go ahead and run it and we'll see what we get out here. So there's our three rows, a row for each of the room types, and then a count of IDs for each type of stay that we have. All right, if I wanna make this useful in some way besides just kicking it out to a, a browse, 
What I need to do is make a small adjustment here. I'm doing it just to make this look halfway decent when it comes back out. I want to rename this to um, long and short just to get rid of the count and the underscores that are in there. And then we're going to add a, a small chart here and that's in the reporting tools here. We're just going to do a chart. And for this chart, I'm going to change it to a uh, bar chart. And for the series that we have, let me expand this a little bit so it looks full and you can see everything. Uh, the series is going to be uh, long for series one and then for series two, we're going to choose short. And then the label that we're going to throw on it is the room type. All right, so this gives me a good preview of what it's going to look like, but we can run it through and see the output here and get an idea for what it's going to show when it comes out. And of course, I need to always add a browse tool onto the end of this. So let's add the browse tool and then we can see the chart once it runs through. All right, so very simple look to the chart here. The three rooms are on the Y axis and then the X axis is the count. Of, uh, of stays for long and short. So very simple way to take that data, pivot it, count it, and then kick it out to a chart when we're done. All right, so that's crosstab. Now let's take a look at the transpose version of this. Now the data in a transpose, uh, in order to use it, it's got to be in a little bit different format. So the example that I have here is where I've got the room types the three room types, but the columns are the individual days of the month. And what I really want to do is take that and shift it around so that the room types are preserved, but the days of the month are their own field rather than having them be columns. It makes it easier uh, for me to use them on a chart. So what we're going to do is take the transpose transpose tool and drop it in there and for key fields we're going to choose a room type and the key field in essence what that means is I want to preserve that particular field as a row I don't want it to I don't want it to be transposed I want it to be retained when the data is transposed but all of the other fields I do want it to become its own data field when it's when it's transposed uh, or I want it to be moved into a single data field uh, where each of those elements are its own own row rather than being its own column. So if that doesn't make sense, let's go ahead and add a browse and then run it and you can see what it's going to look like here. So at the end of this, I still get to preserve the room type. All right, this used to just be three rows, but now I get a row for each room type and each day of the month and then the values are preserved. It's just taking the values that already existed in the underlying data and doing that uh, shift to transpose them. All right, now from here, I want to do what I did with the crosstab, was to take that data and put it into a chart. I have to do one other step in this, though, a few other steps, actually. Uh, I still I need to take a little bit different value here for the name, and the name, if you look, is actually the date. So I'm going to hit the drop down and choose date. And then we're going to rename this to date as well. And the value to me is fine and the room type is OK. So I'm good with that. And then we need to summarize this information as well. So I'm going to add a sum to it. And we're going to group by. So I'm going to choose group by the room type. We're going to leave uh, the, the date the way that it is. And um, actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to back this out. We're going to group by the date. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take the value and we're going to uh, sum the values that are in there. All right. And then we're going to add a browse after this as well, just to make sure it looks OK as it starts coming out. So we'll run, run the workflow. And see that we get, I only took 15 dates in here. I don't want to take every single date and see the, the summary that we have. All right, looks decent. I'm going to go ahead and add a chart to this data set, to this workflow as well. So we'll get the chart dropped in there. And then we're just going to do a line chart instead. And we're going to take, for the line chart, we're going to take the sum value 
but instead of uh, the sum value for the label, we're going to take the date. So the date should line up along the bottom in order. And then we'll add a browse after so we can see that chart and run it. All right, so very simply taking the, that chart, we can see each individual day it's ordered correctly, and then the sum uh, for that individual day. I could go in and I could have added a series, an additional column that has the room types built into it, and then we could have color coded the chart. But for this example, I'll just leave it at that. So very simply, between the two, cross tab, taking the individual rows and making them columns, and then for the transform, taking the columns and making them rows, and we can select a key value that we use that will preserve one of the columns or more if we wanted to as a row in our data set. All right, that's it for this example. As usual, leave me some comments and feedback. Let me know if there's anything else you want to hear. And don't forget to subscribe so you can get alerts about future content. Thanks.